In our society, countless people from the ages of 8 to 25 are deeply affected by standards imposed by a dominant ideology, glorified through the vast media. To look beautiful, one must wear a mask to cover their true selves, imperfections and all from society. One must feel small or wear certain clothes to attract or avoid certain labels and attention. All of this out of fear of ostracism from society, from feeling left out and demeaned for being themselves. Beauty standards are just one of the main factors for much of society's mental illnesses. We're programmed to believe that looking good is feeling good, that we must fit the mold to play the role. In the end, these expectations can become overbearing and even unrealistic to many people. We took it to the streets and got other people's opinions of the beauty standards in our society and how it affects them. Hi, my name is Alex Sanchez. I'm an entrepreneur. Hi, I'm Emily Salas. Um, I go to the Trevor Day School. I'm Connor Hines from Ireland. Uh, my profession, I work in a shoe store and I also am a cable technician. My name is Gabby Gomez. I'm, a, I'm from around here. Hi, my name is Susan. I am a hairdresser. Well, beauty standards generally differ from culture to culture. American culture is like, I mean, throughout history has been very white, very like blonde, very like American, you know, like, I don't know how to explain it, I guess, just, you got blue eyes, stuff like that, so I guess it's hard to kind of become that if you're not born that. But in Ireland, like, everybody gotta have the brand new Balenciagas and the brand new Gucci, you know, so everything, I think stuff like that's gotta change, you know. The society always wants to us to look pretty and perfect and that's not right. I see every day men, uh, women, even men, wear makeup, do their hair, have to carry themselves a certain way in order to uh, be presentable in society. I have uh, <laughs> a first-hand experience, my girlfriend, you know, she'll stand, spend two hours in the mirror just doing her makeup, doing her hair before she even goes to work. So. But I tell her she's beautiful every day. Everybody wants to have the latest stuff, everybody wants to dress in the nicest clothes and everything, but it doesn't need to be that way, you know? At a certain age, everyone like wants to be considered like handsome or beautiful or like attractive. Um, I definitely wanted to like be seen as that when I was like 12, maybe I don't know. At a certain age, we all decide that. The, I tell all my clients that they have to take care of the beauty that they have inside of them, and the outside beauty is just a complement. I don't let the beauty do everything. Even if I work within the beauty industry, uh, I always make sure that that's not the most important thing. Well, a lot of the things that influence beauty, beauty standards are celebrities and also just any type of advertisement. And so when you constantly see that in the media, you start to feel like you have to also represent. Like I've seen magazines where like they put white girls like with like curly hair and like that's not right. You need to put like the right colored girl, like a Spanish girl, a black girl, like they put white people into everything. Um, beauty standards are a set of guidelines, I guess, that certain people have to meet and certain groups of people have to meet certain other standards and others. And it's just kind of a mess. It's not fair. And I don't know. You can see how race plays into it. You can see how like gender plays into it, stuff like that. I really, really don't believe in, in standards at all. As long as you keep yourself clean and groomed as a man. I think everybody at a certain point is affected by beauty standards. I think certain people are affected more, you know. I think black people as a whole are kind of affected because like their whole skin tone is seen as like they're not, you know, beautiful in society. In Ireland it's just affected by society's expectations of what you wear and how you look and everything, you know. Uh, we gotta make sure that we take care of our inside beauty, that's the most important for me. I'm Latina and I'm also Asian, so I guess the Standards are actually pretty similar in terms of like the hair where you have to have like long straight hair and then the skin also it's better if you're lighter. If you want to do something do it but if anyone else is telling you then why should you? I don't think anybody should change who they are as long as they're comfortable with who they are. They should love themselves first. Just try to be yourself. That's the main thing. I think it all ties back into that you know you gotta just try look good in your own skin, be comfortable in your own skin and not want to be other people or look like other people or anything like that you know. To explain even further the pressure of beauty standards on our society, we asked professional workers in the beauty industry. My name is Akira Taylor. My name is Taja Ellis. I am a dancer, writer, artist. And I'm a writer and a model from time to time. Beauty. I 
feel like it comes from within. I really, I feel like what makes a person beautiful is not the physical appearance, but the internal appearance, how they are on the inside. That, I feel like that's what true beauty is. I think beauty is obviously relative. You know, everyone has their own opinion of it. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. But I think it really does boil down to like a fusion of like symmetry and like feeling, you know what I mean? You know, they have the European beauty standards. Straight hair, fair skin, you know, that's what's deemed to be acceptable. You know, people who are not my skin complexion, they kind of face scrutiny because they're darker than us. They don't seem acceptable. You know, you don't look good because you're a darker complexion. I definitely became more conscious about my perception and how I was perceived and, um, you know, how I would come in a space, even within, like, my own family, like I see a lot of the repercussions and effects of like what ideals and beauty standards and like what things are regurgitated through media, advertising, everything that we see that frames a huge part of what we do see. Going to a few casting calls, I have gotten turned down simply because of uh, my weight. The casting calls I went to, they were going for a specific look. So they, you know, they usually go for like taller people. I'm 5'1", usually the height is 5'7 and up, so I've been turned down a couple of times, uh, a little bit too thick, but it all depends on where you go. If you're wearing clothes, they want you to be have a very specific body type. Um, if you're having beauty, they want you to, you know, and beauty I mean makeup and hair, um, but if you're doing beauty, you know, they want you to have a commercial, palatable look if you're doing Editorial, you gotta be like chic, and your cheekbones have to be like that. You know what I mean? It's it's communicating a very specific message. Like I have a fondness for the fashion world. I have a fondness for modeling. I just started modeling. I kind of got discouraged because I'm like, why I have to be this high? Like why can't they just accept me? You can easily make a comment about my usage of words or flow or gesture or my body language, but instead you choose to talk about my hair. So I think it just says a lot about where a person is coming from and what someone means or doesn't mean um, when, you know, beauty standards are something that is emphasized. You can just tell more about the other person's perception of themselves when they point certain things out about you. If you feel like you have to change who you are to be accepted, then that, then that crowd is not for you. Definitions of beauty are constantly being reworked. Right now we're in a time where like beauty is all about inclusion and everyone's beautiful and everyone can look any way. We're like 15 years ago, it was a very specific ideal of what that is and meant. That's what most of these brands are doing. They're just like, so we need a gay, a trans, a black, a black light skin. We need, you know, a Filipino. People seeing, seeing us be ourselves inspires them to be themselves. Just embracing who you are, like, so what if they call you weird? So what if you don't look like that or you don't have all the gear? We're just em embracing who we are. So. You'd be lying if you said that, you know, I don't really care, like, validation and blah, 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 perception, but it's like, you do. Maybe it's in a different way. Maybe it's through different associations, but you definitely do. It's human nature. My solution is just be comfortable in your skin. Going back to what I was saying before, that's all that beauty really is. It's communicating with an object or a point in time or a person that reflects a very pure version of you. So if you can find what that is, that's beauty right there. Today, we're slowly starting to tackle some of the expectations of our past and redefining beauty one step at a time. We're overcoming the grief and shame inflicted on us for feeling comfortable in our own skin and accepting others for more than their external experience, but who they are personally. The diversity of the beauty industry is becoming more inclusive for all people from different sizes to different shades. People are working harder on their inner beauty than what's on the outside because comfortability and confidence is beauty.